Okay, so. So, quick uh, heads up and scheduling stuff. Just ordered a pizza. It'll be here in 30 minutes or an hour. When the pizza gets here, we're gonna run uh, the intros a couple times. Probably give myself like uh, 10 minutes or so to eat a little bit. And then I should be back for like another three to five hours for this afternoon. Yeah, that's the plan right now. So cool. All right, let's keep going. All according to plan. All according to plan. Storyteller? The man standing before you resembles an elf, but a very old one. His face is wrinkled and his white beard falls to his waist. The man seems to be completely blind. The old man stares past you with unseeing eyes. He seems to be consumed in his thoughts. He mutters a soft melody, swaying back and forth slightly to its rhythm. The man shudders briefly and stops singing. His mouth opens and closes a few times, bringing to mind a fish brought ashore. Ah, who is there? Is that you, your grace? Who are you? I'm an elf... One second, hiccups. Okay. I am the storyteller, collector of stories. I collect unknown legends of ancient times. Long ago, I was a smith in Kionan. The fire of a forge has burned out my eyes, but I am grateful for it. If I could see, I would get forged suits of armor for Idara's guards. Instead, I have stepped on the path of an adventurer and gatherer of ancient legends. Yeah, it's a hiccup remedy. Take a deep breath, hold your nose, and then kind of put pressure into your cheeks. And what that does is it causes your lungs to kind of press down on your diaphragm. And that's what causes hiccups is your diaphragm spasming. So it actually really works. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, my people are long dead. Their homes crumble to dust and their bodies turn to ash. Only legends can still tell of us of their triumphs and defeats, their joys and fears. I would be so interested to hear the stories told about us after our demise. I've always been drawn to the Stolen Lands, where countless expeditions, armies, and even kingdoms have met their untimely end. When I learned of a new barony being founded in the heart of these lands, I knew I wanted to be a part of this story, so I made the journey here. Wow. Are you really an elf? Do other elves age like you have? A common question. Despite my unusual looks, I am an elf, and an old one, yes. Perhaps older than any other elf of Kionan. However, I doubt my age alone is responsible for my appearance. I kept the stories of, of many peoples and races, some forever gone from the face of Galarian, but they lived on in my memory and my heart. When I accept the new story, I lock it within myself, bearing the weight of its words and the emotions they invoke. I sometimes think that I probably should have died long ago, but some incomprehensible force is keeping me alive and granting me the ability to continue my quest to gather stories. Be it divine power or fell curse, I am grateful either way. How can you tell it was me? The old man smiles slightly. It's not so hard to recognize a ruler by the way he walks. No one in here steps as confidently as you, your grace. All right, would you care to trade stories with me? The man's voice rustles like autumn leaves. I'm a collector, not a trader. If I share a story with you, you receive the power to pass it further, changing or embellishing it, whether willingly or not. Can I be certain that you will keep my stories intact in their absolute purity? No, I do not think so, at least not yet. These legends are the most precious valuables of this world, the last remnants of ancient tribes. They are beacons illuminating the way of the past, allowing us to meet generations long gone. Oh, is this the dude that buys all those items? Uh, I cannot lend their light, let their light fade. The path to the past must be lost. But I can offer you a deal, Your Grace. If you find some items belonging to Era's past, bring them to me. If I recognize the stories hidden in those items, I will gladly share them with you. Cool. And if you find all the pieces of an ancient art of any ancient artifacts, I can even recall my smithing skills to unite them and restore their power. I found the shards of an ancient artifact. Can you restore it for me at the anvil? May I? The storyteller gently touches an, the items from your pack. The scorched pieces of metal is a part of a curious artifact known as the Necklace of Double Crosses. 
Inside it, I sense a story of many deeds, not heroic, but low and maleficent. If you find all of its fragments, I will be able to restore the artifact and recount its ing inglorious story. I brought some relics. Are any of these worthy of a story? How interesting. May I? A coin from a non-existent country. When Kral the Conqueror mastered Rosslyn, having claimed it for Ravoy, he prohibited the insurance and use of such coins. Both ordinary folk and the Aldori um, sword lords were required to use new coins, decorated with Coral's pre profile. But no one was quick enough to be rid of those prohibited coins. Oh no, in many houses they still store boxes and whole chests of such coins, waiting for the day Rosslyn decrees its independence. He gave us like, whoa! How much did he give us per? Damn, dude. And what's this? I hear the voice of trees. Smell the scent of fresh leaves. A dryad's mark, is it not? I would be happy to purchase it from you. A soldier does not ask where the banners of a war are headed. He or she goes to battle, dies, and leaves it to others to decide where the causes, whether the cause was just. This tag belonged to one of many warriors who helped establish the glory of the Talon Empire. If you would permit me, I would gladly purchase it from you. Ah, the belongings of the brave heroes who perform their feats here before you. I sense you would be interested to hear their story. These lands took so many lives and spawned many legends. I can now tell you of a distant expedition undertaken by a group of Brevik heroes to a place known as the Drowned Trees. Tell me! Oh my god. I hear rowlocks creaking, river and water splashing, uh, brushes rustling and arrows singing through the air. I feel an invisible, invincible will, a cold resolution to finish what's been started, no matter the cost. My chain armor clings to my body. My young hands grip a sword tightly. I am the leader of a group of brave souls set off to the stolen lands to clear them from the bandits once and for all. 4,000 gold and 600 experience. Damn! We sail on a large freight boat. It serves as bait for the bandits who keep throwing themselves at it, only to find death. A death as inglorious as the life they've lived. From time to time, we manage to capture a prisoner. While Inquisitor, while our Inquisitor talks to them, I go to the stern, shutting my ears to their crimes. I remind myself that these are scum, drenched in blood to the elbow. I think about our cause, freedom from my homeland, and an independent Rosslyn. But still, my goosebumps rise with each pitiful cry. I must steel myself and be strong. Who is in your group? A paladin, a ranger, a sorceress, a priest, and an inquisitor walk into a bar. The inquisitor looks at the priest and says, oh, sorry. And me, a fighter. All experienced combatants. Over and over, we've saved each other's lives in times of needs. Why do you question the prisoner? The bandits attacking our boat are small fry. We're looking for their main lair, a place known as the Drowned Trees. We seek the leader of the bandits, an underwater monster named Darget Droon. Uh, and we will not leave without his head. Have there always been so many bandits in the Stolen Land? Land swarms with them, and we meet them more often than common merchants. You see, we started a rumor that the Aldori Swordlords are using this boat to sneak treasures out of the country. Now half the gangs in the area are hunting us. At night, it seems the whole army is attacking our boat. Far too many of us, far too many for us to fend off, but luckily we don't have to. While the battle monsters we've summoned in a pitch black magical darkness, we drink the potions we prepared and dive under the water. Oh. The scum break into the hole, but instead of treasure, they find their final surprise, the work of a Restavik alchemist, a trap. A dozen barrels of highly explosive oils. Uh, we watch from a safe distance as a boat is blown into pieces in a deafening explosion. Everything has gone according to plan. The more who die here, the fewer we'll meet in the drowned trees. We march through the forest and the camp to regain our strength. Their nest is close. Our Inquisitor discovered everything, even the location of their secret entrance. Today we rest. Tomorrow the Bandit King will draw his final breath. Even if you sneak into the Bandit camp unseen, how will you handle all of them? Each of us is worth two dozen in battle. Besides, we are well prepared. Chaos, confusion, and summon monsters will be on our side. And fire. Lots of fire. What kind of secret entrance? An underwater path winding along the swamp bottom. We had potions to breathe freely underwater. We couldn't see beyond our outstretched arms in the muddy water. And there were plenty of traps along the way. But the Inquisitor learned all the signs that marked the safe passage. At least we believed she did. We trudge through muddy waters. Suddenly a giant log studded with blades falls from above. I managed to stagger back, but the paladin who walked alongside me is now a gory sight spread thin across the ground. The next moment a monstrous creature emerges from the darkness, a twisted cross between fish and monkey. Its clawed's hand reach out effortlessly, 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 melting away the Inquisitor's flesh, then ripping out her heart. This is the king of the bandits, Darget Droon. The bandit we captured did not lie, but the secret passage he spoke of led right into the underwater lair of his master. 
I bury my terror deep in my soul. There was no time for weakness. There was only four of us left, and we were gasping for air by the time the freak's lifeblood stains the water. We leave the beheaded body on dry land and retreat to recover. Only now I allow my hands to tremble, my breath to race unbidden, my tears flow. What kind of monster was Dargat Droon? They say he was once a normal human, but he offered a... But he offended a powerful fae. She cursed him, turning him into a monster. The one bestowed with the ability to breathe underwater and melt human flesh with his touch. Did you find anything useful there? Oh yes, the Bandit King was a true collector of magical items. We lost two of our friends, but what we found there would help us finish what we started. So the Bandit wanted to set you up, but he played right into your hands? You could say so. Darget Druun didn't expect an armed party to appear there before him, but we too were unprepared for the encounter. The Bandit's lie cost both sides dearly. The next night we returned the same way. We swam to the surface and quietly gathered our bearings. Above us loomed the drowned trees, enormous dead trunks emerging from the water, bridges crisscrossing their branches, the air filled with the sound of battle. Having lost their king, the bandits now battle each other for power, and we are ready to join the fight. We leave at dawn. Behind us smoke rises up to the sky. The banditness smolders and blazes. Only two of us remain, the priest and I. We've won, but this victory tastes of ash, cinders, and swamp ooze. I ask him, tell me, as Vanki, was it worth it? He puts his hands on my soldier and says, Yes, Jamadi. Now the stolen lands will be ours. Oh, shit! We know these people. I wish I believed him. How cool. Thus the expedition of the drowned trees came to an end. I must admit, it's no easy feeling for me to stand in the place of this daring woman. The steel of her soul was colder than ice. Wait, is this the story of Jamadi Adori? But she's still alive. Some people become legends in their own lifetime. Jamandi has performed many glorious feats, and there are many yet more ahead. If Jamandi had once cleared the stolen land of bandits, why must we do it all over again? The death of Dargat Druun and the destruction of the drowned trees weakened the bandits, but not for long. The paladin who died was a noble. It was he who supposed to he was he who was supposed to claim the, land, the claim the stolen lands and send in his troops. While Jamandi sought another candidate or a priest capable of performing a resurrection ritual, a new bandit leader emerged in the destroyed fortress on the banks of the Tuskwater. Within the year, the stolen lands were swarming with gangs once more. The Stag Lord? Um. Huh. Yeah. Your stories are amazing. You make it sound as though you're actually there in the moment. I gained this gift after I lost my eyes. I need a wise advisor at my court. Would you like to serve me in matters of state? Thank you for your words, but I am unlikely to be able to interpret the intricacies of the political world. Okay. Uh, remind me what you want. Okay, can you tell me one of your stories again? Nope. Cool! Great! My lord! How much gold do we have? 27,000. Okay, I'm all right with this. Let's go check out our city. Woo! Fun, fun, fun. Uh, you are there. Okay. Great. In due time. Burf, burf, burf. No, 27k is nothing, I'm sure. P Blaze, thanks for the gift bomb. Mace 2K, thank you again for the $10 tip. And I told you it's taken with a thousand. Thank you for that. And thank you for the message, too. Appreciate it, bud. Also, side note pork, pork, pork. Pork, pork. Do you think this the criticism about this game being hard is warranted? Um, Gordon, this game is in a very unique position where unlike most games, this game is based on an established rule set of the Pathfinder series. So where in most cases, I would probably tell people just get good and stop complaining about the difficulty. Play on story mode if you want to. That's what I would say for most people in a normal situation. If the game is too hard, lower the difficulty. Done. It's easy. But in this case, it's a little bit different because there are people that have been playing Pathfinder for like years and years and years. And they came to this game expecting to be able to play that game in here. And there's a little bit of confusion because a lot of that community does not like how the devs did difficulty. 
and that is warranted. Like there, there's, there, there. You can't like. It's a, it's a, it's a unique situation. But here's what I'll say. If you just take the game for what it is, it's awesome. I am playing on hard, and I am loving it. And I know that people that are not familiar with Pathfinder are playing on normal, and they are also loving it. So, it, do I think the people complaining about the difficulty are right? They, they are, but you shouldn't discount what they're saying for your playthrough. Those people are right because that's their perspective. And if that's not your perspective, then ignore that shit. There you go. Yeah. That's that's how I feel about it. Really, the difficulty All argument only to applies to people that played Pathfinder and came in with a set of expectations that then weren't meant. That's, that's where you're seeing most of the discrepancy. It's where what they're getting doesn't line up with what they were expecting. They wanted to have an easier time. And in due time. They could if they want to by lowering the difficulty, but... A lot, of the, a lot of the people complaining, like, dude, if you look on Steam, a lot of the people that are complaining about the difficulty aren't people Applause, that generally play please. these types of games. They're people that normally play tabletop. So they come into this, and not only do they have to deal with the more difficulty, but they also have to deal with learning how to play these types of games, which are kind of a thing on their own. So, you know, it's kind of like a double whammy to some people. Yeah. I totally disagree to that code. It has nothing to do if you have expectations of already having played D&D or not. Well, I mean, that's... I mean, I'm going off what I read, Renea. So, I mean, you can disagree with me all you want, but go look at the Steam reviews because I'm just going off what I read. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure there's other arguments as well. Yeah. It doesn't mean either of us are wrong. Now, all of that being said, all of that being said, if, you, um, if you've if you been watching my playthrough, hard in this game is hard. And one thing that is important to mention is one of the reasons it's hard is just straight raw RNG. And some people don't like that. It doesn't really bother me too much because I'm okay just saving and reloading and trying that kind of stuff. So it's not, it's not a big deal to me, but that really bothers some people. That difficulty is, in some cases, exemplified purely by RNG. So, for people that that don't want RNG roles playing into their like far. massive difficulty level, that's that's something to consider as well. Yeah, that's something to consider as well. All right. So, oh, throne room into the house. Into the barn, into the house. No, wait. Is this where I'm actually building things? I don't. Do I get? Do I get to like wander around where I'm building things, or does that not how this? Maybe that's not how this works. Up. Oh, holy shit! Is the pizza already here? Uh, give me one second. I'll be right back.
Okay. Pizza's still super hot, so we're going to let it uh, cool down a little bit. Um, one second. Okay. All right. So, um, what are we talking about? Oh, we were talking about the difficulty. Well, I think we're actually, we're pretty much done with that. Um, hey, Mel Gore, what's up, man? Okay, so. There we go. As it should be. I'm going to take a look around this town before we go out and start doing other stuff. What's this guy doing? Can I actually do anything with this board? Oh, well, he's going to bow to me. That's right. Better. In due time. Oh, there's Octavia and Oreganar. Ooh, 24 books. Oh, good God. 48 pounds. Jesus. All according um, to plan. That's right. I'm just going to walk into your home and take what I want. It's mine now, boy. Does the town change depending on how you set up your buildings? You know, I was wondering that too. I, I looked on my map. I don't I don't think this is where I'm building buildings. I think this is different. So I don't think we're in that part of town. Yeah. That or we just don't go to that part of the town. Oh, what am I gonna do with the books? Uh, I'm actually gonna put them in the town square and burn them because I don't allow reading in my kingdom. Yeah, reading reading spreads knowledge and misinformation. It's a very evil thing. So we're actually gonna ban reading. Yeah. Nothing. No, I mean, let's be honest. Nothing good comes from people that can read. Um. No. Follow my lead. Adrenaline says, but not writing. Oh, no, no, no. If you know how to write, we're just going to burn you at the stake. Yeah, I mean, we can't have people making new books. I mean, that kind of defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? Hello, my Oh, savior. what's up, girl? You asked if we'd meet again. And here I am. Hi. I see your fate has changed since last we met. Now you are the ruler who will determine the destiny of these lands. I am their living heart, the whisper of the wind, the strength of rivers, the luxuriant growth of the meadows. Do you wish to touch this power? Uh, what are you asking? I will show you a place where we can finally meet in flesh, you and I. Deep in the woods, there is an old mossy ruins, long abandoned, nearly swallowed by the thicket. There is an old tree growing among the stones in the yard, which I remember as a seed, a shadow under its green crown I call my verdant chambers. Visit me there, my lord, and come alone. A nymph's reward awaits you. <laughs> okay. Um, I was happy to help. I'll see you soon in the Verdant Chambers. So long. I will await you there as the ground waits for spring under that is it a trap? winter snow. Yo, if this is a trap, I don't know who to believe anymore. What's up, lady? What's cracked? That's unacceptable. That's true. Agree. Let's go into this house first. In due time. Hey, get up on. Look at all this stuff. I love stuff. A Jordan Outcast is worth my road dog. Uh, he's actually napping right now. 
Yeah, he's, he's taking a little row nap. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's locked. Sad face. I can't pick locks. Hmm. So we have Verdell to talk to. And Hasuf to talk to. Uh, let's check out this first. This is like a tavern, it looks like. Hey guys, I see a lot of people talking in chat about how I'm robbing my own people. But here's the thing, guys. You can't rob what's already yours. <clears throat> okay, anyway. Let's keep moving. All right. Hmm. Ooh. That's a nice one. Nice. All right, let's go. Oh, got to get that food. Yeah. Co tyrant. <laughs> we got we got the co king emote for the epic subs. We'll have to, we'll have to switch that around. <laughs> That's exactly right, Renea. As for the things that are not his, they are his once he picks them up. That's exactly right. Then they are mine. Can confirm. That's coming from an evil fairy. You know it's right. Hey, Flynn Gaming, what's up? As it should be. Ooh. Greetings, Your Grace. I am Verdell, a blacksmith. What can I do to help you? I'd like to see your goods. Cold Iron Earthbreaker. Ooh. Adamantine full plate? At what? Adamantine is extremely strong and favored by weapons and armorsmiths alike for its ability to cut through solid barriers with ease and endure heavy blow. Armor made from adamantine gets toward damage reduction? Adamantine is so close to the cost of that weapons and armor made from it are always a masterwork quality. Wow. It doesn't even have the full plate failures. Damn. There's full, more full plate. He actually doesn't have a lot of stuff. I thought he had more stuff, but that's cool. Very cool. Tell me about yourself. What's there to tell you, Grace? I'm a blacksmith. My father was a blacksmith. My grandfather was a blacksmith. And his grandfather sold fish. Besides, every one of them was remarkably fertile, so I have plenty of cousins, second cousins, third cousins, and all of them are blacksmiths too. Pretty much all the weapons in Milvian were forged by someone from our family. That's why I moved away from the old home grounds. My skills are more useful here, that's for sure. You look a little unusual for a dwarf. You expect to see a beard, eh? No offense, but what's the point of a beard? Especially when you're a blacksmith working with fire. You burn it once, dip it into lightning oil, uh, lighting oil, and catch a spark from the forge, and your beard's history. You're better off without one. What are you reading? Well, different things. It's nice to take a rest with a good book. Just now, it's Valor and Honor. Ten Adventures of the Splendid Willis Gunderson in Absalom. Nice. All according to plan. What's up, Asuf? You see a dark-skinned, withy man with a weather-beaten face and a happy smile on his face. He is dressed luxuriously, and his dark hair and neat mustache are exquisitely corferred. Hasuf from Absalom is happy to welcome you, Your Grace. Come, take a look at the best wares we traveling merchants have to offer. Please come take a look. Tell me about yourself. My pleasure, Your Grace. Hasuf family was not rich, and he, as many in Absalom, had to start with the, at the very bottom. Uh, as a child, while his peers chased pigeons and stole apples at the market, he worked at a tannery. Oh, I can still smell this disgusting stench. Ahem. Well, the young apprentice worked hard, saved every coin, and soon managed to purchase that tannery from his former master. Then, as soon as he had enough money, he opened his own trading agency. After ten years, countless deals, and many tours in his caravan, Hasuf was one of the most successful merchants in Absalom, thus writing his name indelibly in the history of the great city. 
How was that? I'm looking for a writer so I can dictate my memoirs. I think many would find it interesting and useful to learn of them, uh, to learn more about me. Please let me know when you find a writer so I may burn him. What is that secret of your success, Sasuf? There is no secret. Perseverance, strength of character, attention to detail, and the gift of persuasion, charm, all this among many other things are the key to success in my profession. But if I did not have, but if I did have a secret, who would I be to share it with anyone? The merchant laughs merrily, his hands rubbing his sides. Why'd you leave Absalom, the center of global trade for some young barony in the Stolen Lands? This is a long story. I don't think your grace would be interested. Come, tell me. It was about a woman. When I was still young, I fell in love with the daughter of a judge, an important person, Absalom. For many years, I tried to win her heart, but she was as cold as stone. I should have given up, but this is not my character. In the end, I did manage to win her love, but I was unready for it. As Avdar is my witness, the flames of hell burn inside this woman. I could not live with her for even six months. Tenderness and passion one day, screaming and scandal the next. Well, that's just called being a woman. Sometimes she would break into my office during business meetings to make a jealous scene, and sometimes pull me by my collar from the finest taverns in town. I couldn't sleep. I was nervous all the time, and it started to affect my business. I realized there was nothing else to do but run. Leaving her and remaining leaving her and remaining in the city would be impossible, even in such a city as Absalom. Oh, please. You think you think that's bad about being a woman? You don't want to hear what I have to say about guys. <laughs> Trust me, we're just as bad or worse. Um <laughs> <laughs> I decided never to return and I still fear that wild cat of a woman will follow my trail. Although sometimes after a couple jars of wine, I still remember her. Perhaps it was it was I who unleashed this tornado in her, if somehow I behaved differently. Let me see what you have. Whoa, corrosive heavy flail? Flaming bastard sword? Stratagem. Dude. Flame guard? Oh, it's a tower shield! Yo, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I actually might buy that. I might buy that. Hmm. Damn, this guy has awesome stuff, dude. Awesome stuff. Huh. Ooh. 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 I want all these. Dude, this guy has all the good stuff. Damn! Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, purr! Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, 25,000 for 80 gold? No, okay, that makes a lot more sense. All right. Um, oh, a crowbar. I'm, I'm bringing the crowbar with me. Dinosaur bones? What? Uh, okay. Also used to cast certain spells. Uh, okay. Oh, look at it! How badass! Hell yeah. Uh, Belt of Mighty Khan. Let's give Khan to... We're not gonna bring Druid with us yet, because we're gonna do his leveling thing first before I mess with him. I guess we can give it to you for now. We'll get you some more Khan. Sure. She already has a belt on for strength, so... Alright, the Trap Gloves I'm gonna put on Octavia... Because she's our, our trap slash big lock pick 
girl. And then the perception thing, I think I actually want to put that on... Ko? Does Ko have our highest perception right now? 14. Yeah. What slot does this go in, though? Oh, it goes in the head slot? That's okay, though. He didn't really need that wisdom. Um, in which case, maybe I'll put this on... You. And then we'll put that on our... Uh, our other guy later. Awesome. Great. Alright, man. Wow, what, what a bunch of great pickups, dude. I, I almost want to get that flaming bastard sword. I almost want to get that, but then we'd be broke. We would have no money if I did that. Yeah, that seems... We should probably save up for the bag of holding. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, pr that's a good point. We probably should start saving up for that. Arguably, I should have bought that first, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save up for the bag of holding. We're gonna save up for that. The lesser phylactery is OP. The lesser phylactery. Wait, what? Lesser phylactery. Oh. Oh, wow, that is good. Thank you. I, once we come back with our other, um, once we get this guy in the party, which should happen in a week, I think I'll get that for him. You send the wrong one to level? What, what are you talking about? No, I didn't. In due time. No. We're good. You you can't you can't send the wrong guy to level. The the quest is to level the guy. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, what you're what you're saying is you think that when I when I picked the dwarf to go on that mission, I was actually sending the dwarf to level that guy. I wasn't sending him to level. Yeah. So, um that's a little bit different. Yeah. Hey Jasper, how you doing, bud? Just doing a quick look over here to make sure I don't miss anything. Follow with my, my lead. with my 19 perception. Yeah. The B string gives your summons plus two strength and dex. I will look into that. I need to make more money before I spend anything else. Okay, so I think this may be a good time to go ahead and uh, do some quick munching. So I have been streaming now for just about five and a half hours. What I'm going to do real quick, guys, is I'm going to run a couple of my afternoon intros. So it'll be probably like a five minute song and then our, our normal afternoon intro, probably be between like eight and ten minutes. So this is a great opportunity for you to go get something to eat, use the bathroom, make any calls you need to, do any of that fun stuff. And uh, I'm going to be right here. I'm just going to be eating, eating my lunch real fast. And then when I come back, probably around 125, uh, we'll have another like two and a half, three hours to go this afternoon. So I'm not even gonna turn off the stream. I'm just gonna be hanging right here. Mods, if you wanna go ahead, you know what to do. We'll go ahead and start our time off with that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pause the game right here and I will see you fine folks in just a little bit. <laughs>